meeting will come to order. This is the uh, February 8th of 2022 meeting of the Apple Valley Parks and Recreation Advisory Committee. Good evening, everyone. Um, first order of, uh, of business is for us to uh, stand and face the flag and recite the Pledge of Allegiance. Please join me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Let's take a look at uh, at the agenda, and um, are there any suggested uh, changes or additions to the agenda as as published? Not from the staff perspective. Uh, if not, uh, I'd be looking for a motion to approve the agenda. I move to approve published. the February eighth uh, agenda as published. Second. Okay, so that's a motion by uh, Hebert, uh, second by Scorey. Uh, all of those in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? No. And that mo that motion's carried. So, the, so we'll move right on into the audience participation. And since there is no one in the audience, uh, uh, is there a moderator there this is. evening? Yes. What moderator? Or is there anybody uh, wishing to... Uh, speak to the committee um, online. Guess not. Hearing. I think you can go ahead. Hearing no response, yep. uh, we will assume that no one wishes to address the the, the uh, committee. So then let's look at the uh, at the minutes from our last meeting, which was in November. Uh, has everyone had a chance to take a look at the minutes? Yep. Are there any uh, changes? I think so. No. Okay. Uh, Make like a motion. motion. Yeah. Make a motion to approve the November 21 minutes. Second, Second that. Okay. So that's uh, that's a motion by Hamill, um, and uh, a second by uh, Freed. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? That motion is also carried. So. Um, Move right into agenda f item uh, 5A, the repurposing of the Hayes Park pickleball court area. It's going to be addressed here by Mr. Eric Carlson. All right, Mr. Chair, members of the committee, um, this evening we're going to talk a little bit about the Hayes Park pickleball court and the repurposing of those. A lot of this is the same presentation that I gave to the committee back in December, but if you recall, um, ultimately you asked us to do a little bit of research on what it would cost to um, change the courts into a badminton court. So I'll quickly go through the information that is the same, and then um, we'll have that information with regards to badminton courts uh, for you. So this is just, a, a again, a little bit of history of pickleball courts in, in Apple Valley back in August of 2013. Uh, we opened up uh, what was believed to be the first court south of the river, um, and then we started having some issues with some of our neighbors uh, with regards to the sound that the pickleball uh, sport was causing within the neighborhood. A lot of that had to do, I think, with it being backed up right uh, on the community center and that big cement wall, if you will, just bouncing the noise back into the neighborhood. Um, we had some studies done by some engineering firms based on, on noise to make sure that we were within uh, acceptable standards. And every time that we tested that, we were within acceptable standards, uh, but it still was bothersome to the neighborhood. Ult ultimately, the city council asked us to look into building new pickleball courts at a different location. Uh, the committee recommended to the city council, Johnny Cake Park Ridge West, uh, for, the, for that location. And this past summer, new courts were constructed at the park, and they opened up in September of this year, um, and the courts at Hayes Park were closed. 
Um, so again, um, the, the Parks Committee asked us to research the cost of converting the existing pickleball courts at Hayes into badminton courts. We estimate that cost to be right around $48,000. That cost is made up of three uh, items. Uh, the courts themselves would have to be resurfaced because the um, badminton court is, is lined just a little bit differently than a pickleball court is, so we'd have to resurface or restripe the courts. Um, putting windscreen around uh, the courts would be necessary for badminton. As you know, the, the shuttlecock used in badminton is very susceptible to wind, and so fr from our perspective, for it to be successful, we would likely have to put windscreen around the entire uh, facility to knock the wind down, and then we would have to make some net in court modifications of approximately $5,000, all told about a $48,000 investment uh, based on our, our research. So this is the uh, pickleball court dimensions, and you can see, see um, how it's lined. And then we have badminton court dimensions, and we can see how that is lined. Again, very similar, but some subtle differences in the size of the courts. Again, to review where we have pickleball courts in our community right now or is at these locations. Some of our, our courts are dual striped for tennis and pickleball. Johnny Cake being the only park in town with pickleball only courts. How do we compare to our neighbors um, with regards to the number of pickleball courts we are supplying based on the size of our population? You can see that we have a court for every set, little over 7,000 residents. The average is about 6,800 residents per court. Um, so we're right there in that sweet spot from my perspective. So we're doing a good job providing pickleball courts based on our population size as compared to our neighbors. We can, we can offer more courts, we can offer fewer courts, it's whatever we want to. This just shows that we're in line with what our neighbors are doing, roughly speaking. So we held an uh, open house back in, in, I think it was October to get some feedback from people about pickleball courts at Hayes Park and what should we do with them. We heard there was people there for pickleball courts. There were people there that didn't like pickleball courts and they gave us this feedback um, in relation to what we should be doing at the Hayes Park pickleball courts. Everything from keep the courts as is to close them down, to turn them into an inclusive playground, to turn them into a badminton court, et cetera, et cetera. As the committee is aware, we are pursuing a potential bond referendum, and, and that, that's uh, the result of a meeting that you had with the city council back on September 30th. And as a part of that, we're, we will be exploring updating our parks and trails, making investments in our major recreation facilities, which includes the community center in Hayes Park, um, and then doing some master planning at Alamagna, Kelly, Farquhar, and Redwood Parks. So from a staff perspective, our recommendation to the parks committee is that we leave the courts locked until a new master plan for the community center and the senior center is developed and we see what the results of a potential parks bond referendum are and how that may impact Hayes Park and the future use of Hayes Park and the, and the community center. So that's a staff recommendation. I can stand and answer questions that the committee may have. Uh, I got a question here on the, uh, the, the uh, resurfacing. Um, it sounds like you've got to redo the, the lines just because they're different. Is uh, seems like that's uh, resurfacing it. Resurfacing the courts is an uh, uh, elite way of solving the problem as opposed to spray painting the current lines and painting with the correct lines. Is there was there any thought to that, or what, what's your thoughts on or, or the, the uh, logic behind going? through a full resurface just for the lines. There, there is, and Mike, chime in here if you, if you, if you can. There is there's some um, deterioration of the courts itself on the south side of the courts, in part because they probably get used maybe more so than the north side of the courts got used. Yeah, they're delaminating quite significantly on that southern half. It's showing sh signs of wear on the north half as well. Um, and so opposed to uh, trying to just reline over the top of them, I think it's getting to a point where it could be even a safety issue, the, where it should be resurfaced entirely, or basically repainted and then lined again for new courts. Thank you. Hmm. So basically these numbers then are for doing six badminton courts, converting all six pickleball courts to badminton. 
Correct. Because the last time we talked, we thought maybe we'd just do two to begin with and see what the interest level is rather than spend the money on doing six courts. Yeah, so th this represents all six courts. So may maybe you can cut the resurfacing in half roughly, but you're still probably going to want to put the windscreen around the whole thing, and you might cut the netting in half. So 15, 30, you know, you're probably still looking at 30 to $32,000 probably. But if we're looking at uh, six courts, it's rate roughly 8,000 a court is what you're saying. Approximately. But what we're looking at is, are we going to do it now? Or are we going to do it after we um, see if we go through the, uh, go through the master plan for the area and to see how the, if the, if we even go through with the park pond. Yeah, again, from the staff's perspective, I mean, we're not getting requests for outdoor badminton courts. Um, so I'm not sure that I can stand in front of you and recommend that this is something that the community is crying for or asking for. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't make sense to, from a staff perspective, to make any kind of an investment into converting them to badminton courts at this point in time. Again, waiting for the results of all of the work we're going to do with the community as it relates to a park spawn referendum and what do people really want and what do they want to and what do they want to see the city invest the, their, their dollars in in the park system specifically um, at Hayes and the community center and whatever that feedback tells us then I think it's easier for us to then make some decisions it would seem like this investment would be a, a short-term investment um, and and again one that's not we're not getting phone calls and emails from people saying Where's our, bad, where's our outdoor badminton courts? Eric, have you been getting calls about, I mean, I know the community engagement at the front end and getting the feedback of what should be done with that space since it's been closed, and I know it's winter, so it's a little different, but um, have you been getting feedback one way or the other or hearing at all from residents one way or the other about that space? Yeah, we, we haven't, and I would attribute that to, you know, 99% of that to the fact that it is winter. winter. Mm -hmm. They're not thinking about outdoor pickleball right now. I would imagine come, you know, the end of March, early April, when people are itching to get out and play again, that's when we may start hearing from what's going on at Hayes Park. And that's why we're trying to, you know, bring this in front of you now, bring it in front of the city council, get that decision made so that we can communicate that decision to the public so the public knows what the plan is moving forward. Now, is, is badminton being played in the community center now? It is. We do have open badminton um, in the community center um, on a scheduled basis um, a couple different times during the week, I believe it is. Wednesday nights, for sure, we have open badminton, and then it has happened sometimes on the weekends also. Is there much interest level in it? I, it, it comes and goes. You know, some days it's busy, and some days it's a little quieter. Okay. We're just ramping up now, so... Yeah, badminton is generally an indoor sport mm -hmm. just because of the, the wind situation. But you see it being played in backyards and all the time. So I, it would be more of a recreational type thing than, a, say, a competitive. Or um, But whether that's worth the investment, I don't know. I mean, it just... Yeah, I think finding out what the community wants is important because... Hey, let's not spend another forty-seven thousand dollars on this when the community doesn't even want an outdoor. Who knows? The problem, though, is that you know we aren't gonna. That's two years down the road, and it just yeah. you know it just sits. It just rubs me the wrong way to have that beautiful space just sit idle with a chain and a you know and a padlock around it. Um, well, the, the the other option is to take the nets down and just decommission the space, you know, completely. Um, as Mike mentioned, you know, so the, the surface itself is, you know, in, in a little bit of a disrepair stage where if it was con if it was going to continue to be pickleball courts, and we're not suggesting that, but if it was continuing to be pickleball courts, we'd probably be pretty close to the point where we needed to resurface the courts. Is that correct, Mike? That is correct. Yeah, so. I actually think that would look good. Uh, a lot nicer than uh, having the courts chained up for two years. Dave, what do you think? What's your 
Yeah, I, I, th I think the, uh, the optics of a chained facility um, I don't like. Um, and, and it's not just optics, but it's, the, it's just the functionality. Um, I, I don't know, um, Eric, if you or other staff members know what those pickleball cards cost when they were created, but it seems like the uh, 8000 per badminton court is uh, it's a pretty good deal that we wouldn't be able to find anywhere else. Um, so I'm, I'm still not, I guess, convinced that uh, locking it up is the right solution. So and what, and what, what, excuse me, and what Mark said before too was that I mean that was kind of the direction I thought we were heading last time is we were going to try a, a trial run on a couple of these things and you know promote it and well, uh, call it the Apple Valley you know outdoor badminton courts and you know see what. You know, you know, see what kind of interest the, there is. Uh, where badminton, you know, is a you know is is a very popular sport and it's growing. Um, so I, um, yeah, I, I agree. I six courts is going to be more badminton courts than we're going to need. Then we need I guarantee you that. Right. That's why I thought if we talked about starting with two, which you'd have to do two you can do just one but you do two right. if the interest is there then you could you know add to it um i yeah i just i just don't want to see it chained for years i think it's going to become an eyesore you're going to have weeds starting to grow and um i don't do you have any idea cost-wise what it would take to remove what's there Removing what's there for the most part could probably be done with city staff. Um, whether that's removing, certainly removing the fencing and everything can be done with city staff. I assume we could probably remove the bituminous as well and then, you know, haul in some black dirt. I mean, that's going to take staff time. It's that, so that's not going to cost out of pocket, but it is going to cost staff time. Um, I would guess that's probably a weeks long project for at least four or five people. Um, so you're looking at a you know a couple hundred hours of staff time uh, to accomplish something like that, and that's just a rough guess. And uh, you know, you asking right now with us doing any pen pen to paper type of exercise, and turning what it, it would actually take. Yeah, and turning it into basically a green space. Green space, yeah. right? Right. right. So for, the, for the committee's benefit, I put the ideas that came out of the public feedback session back on the screen, so you can just see what some of the feedback we receive from those that live in the community or live around the park and whatnot. So. So I, I'm, I understand the point about trying a few, but it's either $8,000 a, a, a badminton court or it's 15000 for two. So, I mean, at a cost point, doing all that makes sense, especially if the courts themselves are in, if they're going to be used for anything, what I'm hearing is that they need to be repaired. Um, regardless of what, I mean, if we were to use it as a basketball court or any other kind of surface, it sounds like, it would need to be repaired. Um, I, my question is, how quickly, if you know, if spring comes along, how quickly would we need to be able to say, yes, we want to do this, and then you could, you could make it happen. I mean, it, I don't want to push off a decision. That's not what I'm trying to do here. I'm just trying to understand the timing to kind of get that done. If we start to get it, those calls in the in the springtime, in you know, come back to it and say yes, we're going to do something with it or not, because I I appreciate the optics. I absolutely appreciate the optics, and I think it is horrible. But I don't I don't know that we want to take it out because again, we don't know what the master plan is you know going to say and what the needs are, especially if if it's just going to be repairing it. I mean, that's the the cost is not insignificant, but a lot less than having to put something back in um, once we take it out. So I, I'm not a fan of taking it out either. So I'm just... Well, we know the master plan is not going to have those be pickleball courts. We, we pretty right. much know that. Right. And so if the master plan isn't for badminton courts, then I don't know what 
I don't know what we were going, what we would do with them. I mean, well, as, as they are now, the area has to be repaired. We've already figured that out. Or, and I know nobody uh, in on this <laughs> committee or on the council. I mean, none of us want to say, "Hey, we made a mistake," but you know what? This is not a good idea to put them there. Well, it seemed like a good idea at the time. It did seem like a good idea at the time. But you know what? Hindsight. You know, I was looking at uh, just you know, standards for uh, badminton courts, and there's apparently kind of the trend right now is to put down a PVC mat, pre-printed mat. It's got the lines already on it, and uh, but they're all made in China, of course. <laughs> you know, and uh, they're but they're glued down, um, and it, it looked like like you know, some of these were like two dollars a square foot or something like this. Um, have have has anybody ever? I've never really researched that side of it. The only thing that I do know is uh, similar to our tennis courts that uh, have a um, surface on them, basically a mat surface that are on them. It's uh, what they call either a, a sport court covering or a Swiss flex covering um, that is an option as well, but there that comes at a cost. And I can't say exactly what the amount of that is to do that installation, um, but that alleviates the process of trying to resurface it by putting that mat system together. Right, right. So how many square feet is this? It's, it's what, 20 by 44? Four. Mm -hmm. So 880 square feet? A lot less than resurfacing. Um, I don't know, should we, I don't really, I mean, I, I, I'm looking for guidance here. I mean, should we table this thing one more time and look at the possibility of, 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 of commissioning two badminton courts with the, the pre-printed mats, and, um, or should we just yeah, if we did that, we could also look at uh, what I heard was not all of the courts were in bad shape, but one side of them, north, south, I can't remember which it was, but you could theoretically um, try, you know, as a as a pilot, uh, pilot run, um, two courts on the courts that are in decent shape, and then we get a uh, you know, inexpensive, relatively inexpensive way to test the feasibility of doing more as uh, uh, badminton courts down the road. I think that would be the trick here is to try and do this inexpensively and see if there, you know, see if there is any interest. I mean, maybe 10 years ago, people weren't asking for pickleball, uh, pickleball courts either. Um, so Mr. Chair, members of the committee, so I think what I'm hearing you ask is that you would like us to come back to the next meeting in March with a cost estimate to do sport court, basically, um, for a couple of courts at Hayes. Is that what I'm hearing you ask? Right. Inexpensively, not, you know, not name brand kind of stuff. Is that? Yeah, the, yeah I guess more, uh, more broadly, uh, inexpensively, which could include just um, repainting the existing courts that aren't a safety issue. Can I just ask a question? When we're talking inexpensively, is there a price point that that resonates with with people? I, I, the reason I ask is that again, as a whole, when you look at again, I know we're talking the eight courts and eight thousand dollars a piece. It's I mean it's not cheap, but I, I'm just kind of wondering. I, I I'm just. Wondering when we say inexpensively, I don't know if we half of that. Half of that, okay. I, I again just I just just to yeah. throw out a number. I mean, I I guess my biggest issue is for 800 square feet. I would really like to know how much money we have already put into this 800 square feet with sound design or research and netting and 
we just keep putting more and more money into this 800 square feet and I've I've just I've personally just had it I don't know if I could re make a recommendation and I don't go against I mean I'm pretty much let's go along but I have a really hard time wrapping my brain around putting more money into this 800 square feet that's where I stand and I'll be quiet now So do you need a motion tonight? Nope. Again, what I believe the com com committee's asking us to do is to uh, research the cost to put in basically a sport court type um, court on two of the courts at Hayes Park. Is, I think, and bring that number and that information back to the committee uh, for your March meeting. And come back with a total figure that we've already put into this space. Yeah, that might, that might not be easy to gather since it's mm -hmm. been years of right. trial and error so right that's sunk i mean right. we've already spent it so there's nothing we can right we can't change change what's happened so mark so, what do you think about that i think yeah i it, is the city council demanding that we obviously at some point we need to make a recommendation but are are they Originally, we were supposed to have this done by January. Yeah, so that's that was more of a staff-driven timeline. Oh. We wanted to try to get the decision made prior to the start of the season, so again, we can communicate to the public what's going on, um, so that there are clear expectations about what Hayes is, is or isn't going to be okay. for the coming summer. So, you're asking us to bring back some additional information. We'll do that in March, and yeah. uh, we'll we'll go from there. That's are you okay with that? Good with that. Me. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I'm kind of leaning towards, you know, we're putting all this time and investment into asking the community what they want. They're not asking for badminton right now. I don't like the optics of it being closed, but I, I don't know that, the, you know, build it, they will come is the right <laughs> approach either, you know? Yeah. Um, so I'm having a hard time saying, yes, let's put more money into this, with it, when we're really trying to look at a bigger picture of right. what's that larger plan. So I'm uh, from I, my point of view, it's either we do this or we just take the thing away and just yeah. remove the fence and the asphalt and yeah. plant wildflowers. Well, well I'm, somebody wanted to do. Yeah, I know that was on, that was on the list, you know. <laughs> <It was. laughs> I mean one one potential use reuse of the space that would be relatively inexpe inexpensive would be basketball, outdoor basketball courts. I mean, we'd still probably want to resurface, um, but you wouldn't have to deal with windscreen. You wouldn't have to deal with, you know, well, you'd have to get basketball goals, I guess. Um, so before we did that, because there is a noise component mm -hmm. to basketball, basketball, as we found out over in, uh, I don't know where we put a half court, um, but we might want to talk to the residents of that area. I think you're, I think, although I would like basketball courts, I think that makes a lot of sense in that space. I think with the sound of the building, it's just going to echo and, and we're going to end up kind of in the same spot. Putting in sound dampening trees and this yeah. like we had to at that other court, you know, I mean, it's, a, <laughs> it's, a, it's a 10 year old used car and it's, it's a tough spot. All right. We'll come back in March with some additional information on sport court. Okay. Thank you. Uh, okay, well, Eric, as long as you're there, why don't you update us on the, uh, the county grant, SHIP grant. Yep, Mr. Chair, members of the committee, as you may recall, um, we uh, applied for a Dakota County SHIP grant, which is Statewide Health Improvement Program. Uh, we asked for $30,000 to help fund the community engagement that we have plan on doing as a part of our Parks Bond referendum process. Um, while we didn't get $30,000, we, we were granted $15,000. And so on Thursday evening, the council is set to accept that $15,000 grant from Dakota County. And that would be used to help um, enhance our public engagement that we'll be doing as part of our parks bond referendum process. So um, that's exciting. Um, and it helps us make sure that we do a good job of community engagement and really focusing on trying to reach the underserved portions of our population 
all that live in, in Apple Valley. Congratulations. Great. That's wonderful. Yeah. Yay. Um, half a bad night with Gordon. <laughs> mm -hmm. Actually, it looks like uh, you might want to talk about the, uh, the uh, Midwinter Fest as well. Sure, I can do that. And so we had Midwinter Fest um, this last Saturday um, at Johnny Cake Park, and uh, we have a little slide presentation here. And so it was held at Johnny Cake Park West. Um, we had out, it was an outdoor event in the past. It's been an indoor event at the community center. This year we decided to move it as an, out, as an outdoor event. A lot of the same things were going on, you know, light hockey, etc. We had some kite flying. Uh, we had some horse-drawn uh, wagon rides. Um, we had fires to keep people warm. We had food trucks and, and other beverages being served. Um, there was the medallion hunt and the scavenger hunt uh, process, uh, done by our police department and our fire department. We had a live band at 5 o'clock, and then we had fireworks at 7 o'clock. So um, all in all, the day went really well. Those that attended, I think, enjoyed themselves. Um, we didn't have as many people attend as I would have hoped for, but it was a new event, first time, and so I think it'd just take a, a year or two for the public, for the community to understand that this is a different event and here's where it's at and here's what it's all about. I heard some people say that, you know, they're not going to go uh, because they've taken their kids to that before. Well, they didn't, we didn't do, maybe we needed to do a better job of promoting the fact that there was going to be a ban and food trucks and, and some adult beverages um, and fireworks uh, for that matter um, as a, associated with the event, which is, which is kind of new. So, you know, we'll, we'll, We'll do a better job next year of marketing and getting that information out to the community. We'll be able to put that in our quarterly newsletter uh, with more information than we did this year because we didn't have all the details worked out. Um, and so we're looking forward to it. Uh, again, I think those that were in attendance had a good time. Everyone went home safe. There weren't any incidents um, at the event itself. So something we look forward to doing um, in the future. And I know um, that a few of you were there. and and maybe you want to share a few comments or of your experience at the event itself. Well, I thought it was very well organized. Uh, I, was, I was really pleased. I liked uh, all the fire, uh, the, the fire pits with the, with the wood in, in them and those, the um, propane heaters I didn't think worked very well, but it was awfully windy that night. Uh, so I guess I, you know, I, you know, I would recommend more fire pits, you know, but, uh, geez, the music was, was, was great. You know, we had a good time. We danced a little bit and, uh, um, I don't know, the, the fireworks were fun and, uh, it was just well laid out. They had a war they had a, uh, had a bus there, an MTC bus, uh, as a warming house, mm -hmm. uh, which was, which was great. You know, every, you know, 15 minutes you go walk in there and warm your hands a little bit and, uh. So, yeah, so we really had a good time, and I, I just want to uh, you know, commend you and uh, Mike and well, Doreen and the rest of the staff for, for putting that whole thing together. It was really fun. Yeah, I had the pleasure of attending as well and uh, thought it was uh, a great site for the event and that the, uh, the new uh, activities, especially the fireworks, is something that can really be built upon. Uh, in the future so well done looking forward to next year and we've got a little video that we're going to try to show here if it comes up hit continue, hit continue. today we're at the 2022 midwinter fest here at johnny cake west park in apple valley minnesota and we're here to partake in a bunch of family activities. The Mites hockey tournament has been going on all day long. We've got horse-drawn wagon rides. You know, the fire department's had that scavenger hunt where you can take 10 selfies of yourself and send it in to the fire department. We also have the medallion hunt, kite flying. We've got a beanbag tournament. There's food trucks and there's hot cider and hot cocoa. It's at five o'clock, there's gonna be a band and we're gonna have live fireworks at 7 p.m. Traditionally, this event has been held at the community center, but we decided to move it outside just to try to bring something new to the community, something exciting, and we're hoping that uh, people will enjoy themselves today. Uh, we're at Midwinter Fest to see 
uh, some of the, the fun things going on here. We heard there was some horse rides uh, and a, a good way to meet the police and support them. Uh, so far we have tried the carts that the police are pulling people around on. We also got to fly some kites. We also want to make sure that we thank our sponsors of the event. So we had the Apple Valley Arts Foundation. They sponsored the band. And we had a really generous donation from both the Apple Valley Hockey Association and the East U Hockey Association. The Rotary Club of Apple Valley made a donation, as did the Apple Valley Eye Clinic. So all of those groups made some financial contributions to the event to help make it, make it happen. And then obviously the city funded the balance of, of the events. So it was a great day, and we look forward to doing it again next year. Well, thank you. Next year, you need an Apple Valley hat. Though. Yep, I, I needed to get that, and I haven't got that yet. <laughs> okay. I like that logo. Yeah. That's yeah. a great logo. Um, let's move on to the last, uh, well, the or 5D for division updates. What were we going to do there, uh, Eric? You got anything, Mike? Um, if Doreen wants to pull it up for me, I can certainly try and navigate my through way through it. So, Mr. Oh. Chair, members of the committee, so this evening, uh, a number of our division managers are not with us. Um, our golf course manager is taking some well-deserved time off, and so he's not here this evening. Our arena manager is actually working tonight. They have a hockey game at the ice arena, so he had to work. Um, and then right now, um, and I think most of you know this, that our, our recreation manager, Susan uh, Johnson, she took a different job with the city of Lakeville. So that position is vacant right now. Um, we're working on getting that job posted. So I think Mike is going to give a brief update on what's happening within our park system. And that's all we'll have for division updates tonight. Well, thank you. Good evening, Chair, members of the committee. Um, just to kind of give you a brief overview of what um, our activities are and the park maintenance side of things through the winter. Uh, obviously, we're working uh, on a daily basis, uh, keeping our rinks up and going. Um, that uh, consumes a good portion of our crews itself, usually four to five of our staff that are out daily uh, conditioning, flooding, and, and cleaning up the rinks for, for the user groups. Um, the winter generally consists of a lot of... Um, Equipment maintenance. Uh, a lot of things get uh, that uh, get redone completely in the winter, as opposed to just a smaller um, minimal maintenance and things like that. So that's usually done. Uh, we usually do a lot of reorganization. Uh, uh, orders usually come in the winter of the you know, season. Um, athletic stuff gets ordered. Safety equipment gets ordered. Um, Equipment itself, uh, if it's due to be ordered, that usually happens in the winter time as well. Um, and uh, little details, uh, painting projects, things like that, we're usually doing. Um, our warm storage building usually is chaos by the time uh, winter rolls around, and it takes a small army to bring that back into play, too. Um, but a lot of pre preparation in, in the winter time, too, uh, to gear up because. April rolls around, you know, we, we hit the ground running. Um, all of our athletic facilities are in high gear. 
Um, we start prepping for the aquatic center to open up and, and the redwood pools. That's uh, time consuming items there. And uh, obviously our mowing efforts start too. So that's kind of what our winter consists of. Um, you know, uh, being the rinks will be closed down in a few weeks, um, you know, we just really start to focus on getting stuff staged and ready for the spring of the year. So with that, I stand for any questions uh, that you might have. Any update on your new maintenance facility or? Um, we are still doing some planning stages with that yet. Um, each division, uh, public works, streets, utilities, uh, and our parks department all have an input on how some of the designs are created. Um, we've got a basic footprint put together for most of it. Um, we're still balancing out uh, doorways, hallways, uh, some office space, and things like that. Um, so we're getting close, um, and we've really got to get some traction in the next few weeks to get that up and going so uh, that project gets moving forward. I think most of the groundwork is laid for that. It's just some small uh, details that need to be ironed out. Is that yet. in the same location? Then? Yes. Um, it'll take up basically the same footprint. Um, some of the divisions will be moved in there just to facilitate uh, how each division is used, make it a little more efficient, so to speak. Uh, our parks department will probably be shifted to another portion of the building where the mechanics are housed out of right now, and the mechanics are staged to have a separate building entirely um, so they can work a little bit more efficiently. There are a lot of rules and regulations when you're working on equipment when it's running. Uh, ventilation situations and things like that that need to be considered. So um, that portion of it is kind of looked at as a separate building completely. So uh, any other questions? No, none for me. Mm -hmm. no. All right, thank you, Mike. All right, thank you. Thanks. Um, item six. Okay, does any... Uh, uh, Committee member, have anything else that they would like to uh, discuss today? Uh, Doreen, when is our next meeting? That would be the first Thursday in March, which would be March 3, March 3rd. Okay, March 3rd, all right. Well, unless there's anything else, then I think we should look for a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn the meeting. Second. Mo motion by Freed, seconded by um, um, Lisa. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? No. Meeting's adjourned. Thank you.